Ho boys, welcome back to um, some Super Mario 3D World 100% in the last episode. We left off in this very uh, interesting world, World Castle. We're gonna rescue our last Sprixie now and just casually finish the game. I was actually in crap by the way, we need 130 to get in here, but now it's uh, one of the trickier levels. This is the second of three levels, I believe, where you need the Uberain power-up to get through it. That means we're gonna have to play through most of this without even taking a single hit point of damage. Otherwise, things get, uh, very bad. This is the harder of Bowser's castles, and also has a slightly more annoying Bowser fight, but other than that, it's pretty crazy. It also starts with the first official Death Trap one. You have to start by wall kicking off that side and then head that to the left and then from there we do that now that's not the only power up we need we need the cat suit in addition to that so this is just the first half of it because we can actually do another skip on in addition to that and i'm gonna actually just do that right now so if you climb up this wall and head to the right there's a star hiding for you up here and another one hiding up the game doesn't even give you a chance to do that before that thing comes in, and if you're not ready for it, things will happen. And yes, this all basically just has everything going around everywhere, and also introduces a new instant exploding bomb, which is like the regular foot bomb, but if you try and kick it, it'll just uh, hit you back, so... Any time we can skip uh, doing stuff, it's uh, probably for the better. And there's the tough part. We need to reach this entire area. Okay, I am gonna go for this, just to be cool. Right, now we have to kill these jerks. Which we did. And that, uh... Lowers the bridge to reach the next area. Okay. Well, now the hard part is out of the way. We no longer need the boomerang. We could even get rid of it and it would be fine. But we do want to keep the cat suit to the end. So now we have a Bowser fight. And this time around, I am going to do a trick. But in order to do it, I need to set up my cursor. So hopefully this will work. And because, um... I don't have a char. I have to start by jumping up really high and pressing R and then just spamming this. And you'll see that I can keep the balls using it. It's not going to work exactly right, as you can see. Also, I could. Can I just use this? Yeah, I can. Okay. And by the way, I was joking. <laughs> we'll have to kit these normally. I believe there is a way to trick skip it without the touch screen controls, but to do that, I would need to do other stuff. So what I tried to do was put the touch screen or whatever in a very specific spot, and then... The sooner we could get past any of these traps, the better. So this is the more intense Bowser fight, in my opinion, because there's a lot more bombs going on this time, and now there's additional spike traps he's added to make it a slightly more intense fight, as well as we have to wait for the stupid fire every single time. There are ways to manipulate him to potentially throw a bomb sooner. There he goes. It's crazy how the longer the fight goes, the more stuff that gets thrown into the way. Like, now all of a sudden there's 
little chaps in this area. Yeah. Beyond that, it's just another Bowser fight. Nothing really happening. You can use either the boomerang or the bomb to hack it back um, if you're not using your regular controller. Just like the last Bowser fight, he's not actually that hard. His level was way harder. But, with this, um, Bowser sort of dies, or not. Now, this entire bridge spanking sequence, in case you're still kind of new, is a homage to Super Mario Bros. 1, where you use the axe to put him into the lava, only he kind of just falls off on his own. That also happens in Super Mario 3D Land, except that t one you actually use a button to make him go into the lava. That one, he kind of just uh, knocks himself into the lava, which is kind of weird. Anyways, grabbing the final top plague ball, we free the last Sprixie, which means we're technically done, right? Probably not, though. This seemed a little too easy, obviously. And... And fake out. Yeah, Bowser's not going to last win that easy. So, before we're able to do anything, Bowser uh, decides to capture all of the Sprixies again. And from here, we actually get to see Bowser's true plan. Bowser's actual true plan. And here you see he is... He finally gets his wish. He, I mentioned how he wants to build a kingdom of his own, and he kind of gets that wish in a second. Once uh, we go up, we'll see that Bowser's actually built an entirely new world for us to conquer. And Luigi is kind of worried because, yeah, uh, the everyone just escaped. So we go even higher into the sky, to the beyond side, to find, oh, well, there's this crazy platform. And then, we're like, well. And then, all lights, and then the reveal happens. Welcome to Bowser Island, the true final world of the game. Yeah, you can completely forget that last world happened. This is the true final world of the game. It's way more challenging. It has even more challenges. And for this video, at least that I know of. We're gonna try and do this entire level, or world, in this video, if we can help it. That is what we're gonna try and do. And none of the levels are e any easier, either. It just gets even harder, and it starts with an annoying spiky bridge level, which has some very annoying spiky bridge cycles to get through. Our first screen star is hidden at the end of this skyky bridge. Thankfully, we got our cat power up back, so it's pretty nice. I don't want to even deal with that. Right. Now for the slightly trolley part. Now, you see, there's two different paths we could take. We're not going to take either of those paths. We're just going to run around the side to the right until we reach this end over here and we collect the stamp like that. And then we just jump to make it to the end. And that's not all. There's still one more left <laughs> after riding on this fireball like nothing. We head to this secret where we have to um, do a series of wall clips up here. And I did that really bad. Another kind of tight platforming section. Also, what happens when we miss a power-up? We have to die and try it again. Yes, I know I could do the other thing, but that would involve playing the level again from the beginning. I don't want to do that, so we're going to do this instead. Thankfully, it's close enough that there's a power-up right next to it. And by the way, that attempt was kind of pathetic. It basically ended as soon as I uh, missed that up. Well, now we know where that is. We're just gonna pound that. Cool, we got it that time. It is World 
Bowser, so yes, I expected that to be a little bit more challenging than the mystery box houses that came before it. And there is still one more we have to do, in addition to that. Also, we don't need to get that block. I'm actually just going to straight up skip it, but unfortunately we did miss the cycle on that. So we'll just skip over here casually and reach our final star at the end of this platform and from there the rest of it is just survival. We have to jump over these spikes until we reach the end and from there we are done. The game does try and throw some dry bones to the mix but we don't really care about them. They're not really near that area so we kind of just skip them. And then we have to deal with that at the end, which obviously I'm not going to do, so I'm going to do a trick where I just jump to the side, climb up the flagpole, and I'll get my golden flagpole that way. Old Bowser will probably have a lot of that, since obviously uh, not doing it would be kind of silly. So we get that, and we can move on to a later part of the world. Also, get ready to hear this theme for the next uh, hour or so. It is probably one of the better themes in the game, or at least the overall theme, in my opinion. And a pointless uh, power-up that doesn't do anything, unfortunately. There are a couple of secret hidden spots that people probably don't know about, and one thing I do know about is there is a hidden series of stars you can pick up. But anyway, this level will start with a much more harder classy battle, and this time around it's pretty easy to miss some coins if you're not careful. And guess what? Yeah, w oh wait, hang on. This time around, we're going to be uh, using the try again feature to just try again from the beginning whenever we miss a star. And as you all guessed, yes, this is the harder of the press C levels. The R1 looks just like a joke because obviously it didn't work. That's not even the hardest of the stars to get, by the way. There's a much harder star than that, but... <laughs> yeah, I've uh, failed that light twice. I really do want to get this, so please let me get it. Perhaps I need to just uh, hold nothing, and then maybe that'll get us to the end. Yeah, there we go. That got us the first star. Now if we miss any others, we're gonna keep this, just so we don't have to deal with that anymore. Okay, this one's kind of a sneaky one. Head to the right and stay in the middle. There's a secret path to your stamp. I'm... Um, I bet you, uh, you all didn't really uh, get that on your first try. Now we have to hit this Bowser statue, or one of the other statues, or never mind. I thought it was going to be one of those stars, but I guess not. Wow, so everything beyond the first star was much easier to collect. The only truly annoying one is knowing that uh, to get that stamp, there's an invisible path. Obviously, I remember that, because I'm um, playing this game casually. And we'll just slide down here. And onto the flame pole we go. That's always a really cool one where you kind of just slide to the end. Cause that was a much more easier level than I fought. Took a couple of resets, but we did it. And here's a cool thing. We don't have to cut out anything now. So I just saved the stress of having to do that. And anyway, onto World Bowser Free, which is on the right. I forget the name of it, but I'll see it soon, I think. It is Cookie Cogworks. Also, if you um, reset the same character, you can actually enter the level sooner. I thought I would show that off at least once. Because, <laughs> yeah, it's fairly cool. Now, Cookie Cogworks is a little bit more tricky to get all the stars in. There's a couple of secrets uh, hidden in here that you... Avi won't be able to find the first time you do it. Oh. 
course. Alright, I think I could climb to the top of this cookie to get to a secret, because it doesn't seem like uh, they'd want you going up there otherwise. Or not. Yeah, I'm not going to deal with that at all. <laughs> not when we have a cat suit waiting in an. Okay, can we get up here? Nope. I was going tempted to wait on this until later, but I guess not. All right. How about we just go up here instead and see if there's anything up here? Nope. Nice to check, though. Oh, great. I'm not going to like this. Any one with piranhas is just going to be super annoying. We just need to get a cycle where they do not attack us. Okay, I think one of the secrets might be hidden on this cookie. So I'll we'll fall down for a second year to try and figure it out, but I guess it I see it's not actually there. Oh there it is. That's what I was waiting for. Also there's a boomerang apparently. That's interesting. I don't see the need for it since I could just do that. So yeah, you kill all these ants and then you follow them into their hideout to get your stamp. That's the one I was mostly worried about. And then we do it again in this area. You could get some pretty good points I killed all of them, by the way. Right, now we have a secret. What's in here? Oh, survival time. Found it! A little bit more challenging, but still not really that difficult when compared to the other challenges I've already had to face. Oh, that was very close. Oh, this might be one of those levels. I forgot if it is or not. Yeah, oh, it is. So, this level has a very interesting troll, as you can see, in the return of the Ultimate Troll Flagpole. What's the Ultimate Troll Flagpole? I'll tell you in a minute, but first we need to get over here. If you had the cat suit, you could kind of just jump off here and dive to the hidden platform. And on it is a rabbit you could catch for your final green star, which we're gonna dash at. Thankfully, we got in in a decent time, otherwise we would have lost, probably. From there, we take that and we teleport back, and from there, we can kind of just jump up to get our flight pull, and we're done with the level now. And that's World Bowser Free. Nice. That one did take a little bit longer because of having to wait for stuff and the time nearly out of us again, but we made it through in decent time, which is fine. Now the train level, the very long Autoscar train, a much harder train to get all the stuff on. This has another troll in the form of you have to get this green star right away, otherwise things can get kind of deadly. This one has quite a few more annoyances, mainly in the form of more enemies and other stuff that you have to deal with. But in the that, it's another auto score. We can't do anything to really speed it up.
Okay, that one's not required. This is the trick part that I found, remember, by the way. If you stun these enemies while they're in that area, they'll actually, um, momentarily teleport up, which is kind of strange. And I'm gonna take some damage to get this early because we were kind of behind. So we need to... Um, yeah. Well, yeah, that's kind of shameful dying in the aisle, sir. But then again, we were pretty slow there, so hopefully we could do a little bit better. That tempt basically died as soon as I d took too long to get up there, so hopefully we can uh, do it a little better. Hopefully. I'll just dash through that like nothing's different. And there's the question mark block required that I was trying to get earlier. So, getting it on your head makes you constantly collect coins and also it fades away after a little bit. And also it gives you an extra hit, so now we can take damage once without actually taking anything. Fortunately, for some reason you can't use your power-up while you have it, which is kind of dumb. Okay, this time we'll do the actual strat T for this, which I believe is waiting for them to do damage or something, or I don't know. Actually, now I think of it. Oh, 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 there's just that. <laughs> there are two ways to get that. The main way I thought I had to get it is to use the stamp or whatever to get it, but um, I guess that's fine. Okay, well, as soon as we got through that, that's not actually that bad anymore. And now we face Pom Pom again for some reason here. So it might be a little trickier just because of not having a power up and having a jump. This is also a lot harder to tell which one is real, so we kind of just casually wait and hope that we spawn next to him, which. Thankfully, that fight went pretty good. Again, it's pretty easy, so I would be kind of surprised. Right, now we have to do the momentum to make sure we get this flagpole. And yes, I don't want to use power-up returns unless I absolutely have to. Okay, I need to do that again. Got it! Yeah. I was about to say, if I missed that, that would be really annoying. I'd be even more annoyed if I missed the golden flank pole at the very end of the game. Like, there's one last level, I believe, left out as. If I ever miss that golden flank pole at the end of the game, I'm gonna be kind of pissed. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. In fact, I only had an additional challenge and just put in the cat suit for later. Because uh, I don't even want to deal with that. Alright, now to this level. Which is another plus level for some reason. Lots of levels would just uh, randomly have plus for some reason. Going here with no power-ups right now at the moment. This is another level where you can do the glitch. And the basic glitch is you can stun enemies using stuff. If you freeze those tadpoles when the water is moving down, they will actually uh, teleport to the top manually because the game didn't actually expect you to do that at all. So yeah. Also, this level sort of pays homage to a thing you might see later on. Not quite yet, but later. Also, because we don't have any power-ups, we may have to do this level the intended way in terms of getting the flagpole, so hopefully we can get it. Oh, not anymore, because we just found our cat suit again. <laughs> I will say, though, if I am going to see on this game, knowing where the back of cat suits are is definitely important. Now, obviously, if you were to do the level really quick, you would want to keep the cat suit the entire time if you can. You know what? We'll just wall jump up this site. Who needs water when you can just wall jump up for everything? And we can get a green star over here. Our first one. And the plus C section. 
the only plessy section in the game to not have music. Which is kind of weird. Also the only section to technically not really have a 2A to, which is kind of strange, but before we go anywhere else, I do believe there's a secret up top here, and the only way to see it is to climb up this spot. Lots of cat suit secrets in some of the later levels that uh, could definitely uh, make it trickier. Of course, uh, it's it's one of the few that I do remember, so obviously I was able to go in and get that very quickly. And there's our backup back, and now it's like nothing ever happened. Well, we started this level with no power-ups, now we have power-ups again, which is nice. And we need, I believe, one more. I don't know where it is, so we'll go in this lower section first, and then kind of jump up here, I guess. Oh, yeah. Lots of katsu climbing required for this level. <laughs> so, of course, they give us the katsu back. Also... This one kind of doesn't have uh, any uh, star here. I was kind of expecting to find a star here. Cool. That was kind of a weird exit. I was trying to ground pound and nothing happened. And that kind of takes us into our final area, which has the flame pole we need. Anyways, done with world uh, Bowser 5 or whatever it was. World Bowser 5, I think. And doing this will unlock our secret that, yeah, could be kind of easy to miss if you don't know about it. It is the very secret, um, hidden mystery box in either the left or the right. I forget which one, swear. Okay. Okay, never mind. One of these pipes is going to lead to that area, so we're going to have to find it somewhere, which we can't really find until we do all the levels, so we'll start by uh, just doing that. The light lane will be our first level here. I mean, next level here. This one's a little bit tougher, because again, we don't have the thing that lets us see stuff. I'm going to choose not to take that. Hopefully I don't regret it in the end. So when you don't have uh, the cat suit, the only way you can uh, theoretically go for this is to just look at the platforms on the right, or pound, which is what I think I'll do. And every time you pound, you'll reveal a small section of the platforms for a moment. Otherwise, it's kind of tough to find. So yeah, most of these jumps are absolutely blind. I got the star at the very least, so that helps out a little bit. But now we lost our bet up. Have to keep our other power up for the rest of the game. Well, at least as long as we can. You know what I don't really like? Dealing with all these dry bones. Let's use uh, this to kill as many as we can from... A specific distance that they'll just fall into the pit and die because I am just gonna get annoyed running for all of them and I didn't even <laughs> uh. as you can see I hate this level without touch getting controls this is an art casual killer for sure this has lots of stupid traps everywhere and most of the level you can't even see where you're going unless you ground pound or a flop does the ground pound for you only then will you, will you be able to see where you're going. And let's be honest, I even I don't know where I'm going. So we'll start by skipping this a little bit. And just take a dodge, because I don't care. I want to get to this end of this as soon as possible. There, done with the first section.
Again, there's no real secret to tell you that you need to do this. Come on, dude. Whew. Oh, I barely survived that. I should not have survived that. Let's uh, do a safety here. Get this, stun them, and then get our other power up back. And we're back to normal again. You know what? I'm just going to skip that. Screw that. Also, there's a secret over there. This one has our stamp. That's what I was trying to avoid. I find it kind of interesting that the cat uh, bullets are the ones that uh, home in on you. Please... Okay. Okay, looks like I can just go up here. We're gonna jump on them if we can help it. Leave it out or just avoid them entirely. All, all the way to the right here. Okay, I played that insanely safe, man. And just climb up to the top there, finish that on off. I went on a couple of deaths down, but we finally managed to sneak by. The first section event, everything was trolling us, just because I was so focused on the giant bones that I completely forgot the path. That's obviously a one where if you want to do it really fast, you basically have to know the path from the beginning. <laughs> So, I obviously was going to fail there because I did not know about it. But we saved our power up, so we're fine now. And actually getting to the spot where you need for that um, secret actually takes a lot longer than what you would expect. In fact, there's going to take a while before you do that. Also, time for potentially the last two regular levels in the game and then once we finish those we aren't going to need to do anything else first it finishes with Luigi's actual level this time Luigi is required to get the coin in it so this time we don't even need uh, anything and uh, this one has an interesting mechanic in the form of this light beam thing or whatever it is we shine it at Abu, and they will go away after a few seconds. And the goal is to kill as many of them as you can find. Rather than evolving around keeping your power-ups, most of this evolves around just surviving to the end while also keeping this light for as long as possible. We're gonna just fall down here early. And here, the invisible part reveals that there's another secret here. Cool strategy, you kinda just stand still and do stuff. Now for the actually tricky part of the level that uh, no one probably likes. Oh, and yes, those dry bones can still hit you, so yeah, we have to deal with those again. We do have the cat suit, well, we are going to just claw as many of them as we can. And we're just gonna skip the rest of it, because it's not actually until later. Much later that we have to deal with that. And here's the Charlie secret. We'll see if we can get it right away. Jump off early and hit to this area and you find a secret warp pipe where you have to use this thing to 
Sign all the enemies. We almost lost it. If we lost it, we wouldn't be able to defeat them. So that was clutch and a half. And that would have required an hour of death, obviously. And now for the last bit, we solve a puzzle. Which is obviously not on the left, because would they make it that easy? Right. Uh, now for the final part. Which, uh, turns into an auto score all of a sudden. Just like before, we could just do that and all of the enemies die like that. Kind of cool that while you have that, you don't even have to deal with them. The last uh, star, I believe, is hidden somewhere in here. Oh, and there's more of these stupid uh, idiots again. So we're gonna kill, uh, uh, stun as many of them as we can. Okay, I believe that's actually the last point we actually require this. And we're just gonna skip it, and because we don't have the light, we have to lure the big boo away, but that's easy enough to do. We could just lure him to here, grab the star, and then turn around and head back. Luigi's very brave ending to a house like this, and also time for the trap thing. That's just going to try and drop us off to the side. We're just gonna <laughs> jump off from there, because it doesn't really matter. And... We kept our power up, which is what counts, so we can continue on a little bit further. <laughs> and Luigi's lost his hat. Rip. Well, not really. That's just what the stamp said. <laughs> okay, uh, I believe this one may or may not be the fake pipe here. Because there is one pipe that technically takes you nowhere. And yep, yeah, that's- oh wait, no. That is a fake within itself. Looks like they may have removed that for this game, but anyways. Final Mystery House of the main levels. Mystery House Claw Climb. One of the trickier ones. We're gonna use it to pick up a backup cat suit power up and then finish the level by climbing up to the end. These ones are a little bit trickier, but beyond that, all of them evolve find hiding and picking up the cat suit. And then just using your cat suit powers to climb all the way to the top of each of the levels. It's gonna switch. Oh, jeez, that was almost annoying. Anytime you miss a star by just a tiny bit, it can get really annoying. Now, in a minute, we will probably get repeats of the same levels, starting with this one, except this time the star is at... A different spot. This time at the top of the level. And there you see we have to use a new form of ability that you probably haven't seen yet. Where if you uh, move through to the right, you can do what's called a cat dive. Where you kind of just slide to the right and do stuff. Now for one of the more obnoxious ones. One of the only times you kind of get faced with death in Mystery House levels. It's like, why would they make you potentially die in these Mystery House levels? Well, that one has something to say for it. Oh, well, now, kind of the intense run. We have to get to the top before each of these uh, fall down. Again, they only throw you out if uh, you um, it reaches zero and then the fate happens afterwards. As long as you hit chair within a decent time, you'll be fine. Right. The secret has not eluded us today, thankfully. We got that done and now we can uh, go on to the rest of World Bowser proper, which has one more legit level to do and then the final level of the game. But, of course, it's also one of the most annoying levels, Grumble Bump Inferno. Because I'm not doing the skip with it, which would require way too much stress to do, 
It is also a RNG level. I, I, no, I mean all score. That's what I meant. You have to go on these little bump things all the way to the end to reach the end of each segment. And the game doesn't seem kind with giving us power ups, so we have to do most of this normally. And as we go through the all score, there will be enemies trying to hit us. We can't really evade them. There are ways we could speed this up, particularly uh, one where you can ground pound on the thing to make it even angrier, which I will show off. Which uh, results in the thing going a little bit faster, but also allows you to go for other stuff. It's not recommended to do it all the time, because uh, uh, obviously it would be kind of silly. And because we are here, yeah, we're using a Tanuki for this. Okay, those guys apparently didn't have us nothing at all. Looks like there's something up here, but I need to check. Nope. I feel like having this power up is probably safer, so it makes sense. Now for one of the trickier stamps to collect. You have to land on this tiny platform, which could be kind of tricky. It's probably one of the hardest stabs, and also, we do still want the fame, but because of the way the level works, we're gonna have to go backwards through the level a little bit. All the way to here, to pick up our Tanuki again. Which is gonna end up wasting a little bit of time as we go through, because every time we die, we have to deal with that. Again, this is prob- now, forget all the levels I talked about in World Bowser. This is probably the hardest one in here. No joke. I didn't help that we couldn't even uh, deal with that, because before that, we even just we just got straight up hit by the Hammer Bro, which doesn't help. And no, it's not just any other enemy. Of course, it's the Hammer Bro. The most annoying part still yet to come. It comes a little bit later. But right now, we have the auto scorer sort of segment. Fainting these guys away so that their lava thing does not hit me. Took a little while, but we were able to get a hold of it, and yeah, we don't need any fails. We'll go straight to the next run. This is the trickier green star that requires us to go all the way onto the top of it, and also, once we get later on to the level, these enemies appear. We want to kill at least one of them as soon as they uh, go. And right here, this is where we have to collect it. Only appear again. I kind of took a big risk going for that golden flagpole without dealing with it, but thankfully we did it perfectly and now we don't have to worry about that anymore. That one using the Tanuki was probably easier than going in to do stuff. I know I could have swat to the cat suit, but I thought I would do that just to be cool. That would have been kind of bad if I missed that golden flagpole there, but we got it. Now with that done, there's only three more levels to go before this uh, game will be over in terms of its any percent. But before we do that, we have to deal with the enemies once again. And I'm actually going to deal with this bodily boss mob guy. I did not like him once. Hopefully with the tail, he'll be a little bit easier because I could just spam attacks to deal with him. So yeah, of course World Bowser has the return of the Bowser suit things, which forces us to do essentially a slightly harder version of the fights we did before, but now uh, it's a little bit more annoying, to say the least. So for Molly ba ba Boss Blob Part 2, he gets a little bit more annoying and now adds shockwaves to each attack, which is where he gets really annoying, because now in addition to having to run, you have to jump over his miniature shockwaves that appear, in addition to still hitting him very quickly. 
since this power up is the easiest to use, we'll use that because obviously not using that would be bad. And if you take too long to defeat him, I'll just uh, us do this and go back together, which uh, is one thing I was worried about. And now you can see why everyone hates this boss. He's so annoying to take out, and I wanted to deal with him first because he has the harder fight, sort of. Okay, we got him on the last part, thankfully. I'm gonna have to do a safety here. I actually don't want to deal with this. Hang on. There's a little strategy I'm gonna do here. Let's use this fire to kill off our clones intentionally. And now we don't have to deal with that anymore. That just allows us so that we only have one Luigi on the screen at a time, which allows us to do a slightly easier flagpole grab, and we don't even need to dash because we're a Luigi. We could just do that. So we got the gun flagpole, and now one more boss battle later, and we'll be done. I thought this video would be a little bit shorter, but it actually might be a little bit better than I thought. You never know. And again, in case anybody missed it, we're using Luigi for the entire game just because he's the most straightforward character to use, in my opinion. He has decent speed, very good jump, if not the best jump, and a couple other stuff. Also, you can go in here for some reason. I wonder what's in here. Oh, a uh, hidden one-up house. That's actually a good time for it. I completely forgot this was here. Well, we learned, some we learned something new today. Fortunately, the Tanuki suit won't be useful, but... Still nice to have. Well, I guess that was really cool, showing off that hidden secret. Anyways, on to Hister Cat Returns, which will have a secret Tanuki, I mean cat suit power-up. So we'll start by actually uh, removing it. And yeah, I was right. This is the one where uh, they don't hide it in the right, but in the secret part. Now, back to Histocrat, who apparently uh, did change his RG a little bit, so we'll have to wait a little bit. This time around, she adds flames to her attacks, which makes the fire linger a little bit longer. Beyond that, it's just a girl version of the same boss we encountered before. I believe there is no way to glitch on him in this version. In the original version, yes, this is confirmed, and I believe this glitch was patched for this version of the game, but in the original version of the game, it is possible to um, attack either of these bosses by just spinning and jumping, and you can go straight on the top of their head immediately. You don't even have to do any of the waiting. And it lets you hit them immediately, and also removes a lot of annoying RNG, because you would have to wait on these guys to get you self up to each of the bosses so you can go high enough to hit them otherwise yeah things happen sorry if that sounded confusing but anyways we took him down very quickly since i know the strategy probably doesn't work on him i feel like uh dealing with that is probably the best but yeah Right. By taking out both of these, you have to take out both of these bosses, and once we've done so, we can head down the gun trail to finally face Bowser at the end of his area. 
in World Bowser's final level. The Great Tower of Bowserland, do I will now challenge. Unfortunately for all the stuff that it has going for it and the cool background, uh, this is actually kind of an underwhelming final level, which you'll see why in a minute. But it starts with, uh, yeah, Bowser's car is destroyed there, but that's not the only thing we're doing here. This level I may slowly retry to get through stuff, but there is one thing that I need to remember. I believe there's two stars hidden in the regular stuff, and then the rest of the ones you actually can only get via the final level of the game as you go through it later. Cool. I do not like that I lost this uh, cat suit early, but that's fine. This level has plenty of cat suits, so we can get ours back as many times as we want. In fact, we could probably start by killing these enemies. Or we don't even need to. Okay, so this is the slightly trickier one. So, to get this part of the phase done, we have to knock off all the bullies. But this time, we have to wait in such a way where we can knock them and they'll actually fall for the pits. Which makes it a little bit difficult. Obviously, you want to do this as low to the ground as possible. Because then you could just knock them straight off without having to wait. If you get rid of all of them, a star will then appear in the middle, which you can climb up to using the cat suit, and then jump back off. Beyond that, it's not really that challenging. The rest of the stuff we cannot get until later, and yeah, that's right, there's one final star left still. One of it is hidden in uh, the actual boss fight itself, which is a chase sequence, in case you're wondering, so sort of like... Uh, it was played in Super Mario 3D Land. I will say, while this definitely looks better than the Super Mario 3D Land version, I don't like it because of one thing. The way he dies. But anyway... Bowser's kind of tired of dealing with us, by the way, so... He's gonna pull out a power-up of his own. You know that trick uh, with the cat suit? Bowser's going to use it to do his own trick. And say hello to Meowser now. This is our final battle, and to do this, we have to essentially complete a lawn auto scroller. Where we have to escape them. This is very similar to how uh, Super Mario Bros. Wii and um, the original Super Mario 3D Land in the chase sequence. Of course, he's not going to make it easy for us. He's going to dash through the area periodically, and... Anything he uh, runs into will immediately uh, deal with stuff. And all I was not... I should have not been talking, by the way. <laughs> Seriously. Welp, okay. Thankfully, I have a cutscene skip, so it won't be that bad. But still, I feel kind of bad dying in... That's not even the la... That's not even the hard part. I just kind of chilled out. Sheesh, I need to stop talking and actually playing the game. And that was after I gave this level crap for saying it's one of the underwhelming fire levels in the game and I died in the exact pot I accepted it. Now I feel like an absolute idiot for dying that spot. I kind of just uh, froze there for a second and I forgot what to do. Well, that's fine because uh, I'm kind of just going to do a skip here or attempt to, well... No, I would have to go up here first, so we'll do this, and then go to the right. And there we go, we actually reached it this time. <sighs> Thank goodness there's a cutscene skip, otherwise it would take forever to do that. <laughs> it's so annoying, too, that we weren't able to do that on the first try. After all the work we put in, we just straight up fall off. And that's after I gave this level crap. <laughs> well, okay then, round two, well... Forget what I said before, I'm just gonna say it all again. So yeah, welcome- Say hello to Meowzer. To do- deal with this entire fight, we essentially have to do a extremely long auto scorer. But the goal simply being to get to the top of it as fast as possible. 
And you know what? I am gonna move a little bit quicker this time. The sooner I could get up to the clouds, I think the better. And here's the trick I mentioned. Right during the middle of the chase, we have to get these eight red coins hidden in there. Otherwise, we won't be able to finish the game without it. This time we'll wait. Yeah, just fall down, buddy, and then I will uh, go up here. Whoa, okay. So to get for the first section, we have to use the power-up bomb or whatever. This is where the level actually gets a little bit more trickier, because in a second, he's going to pull an off-screen uh, double cherry using the same power we used, and now he has multiple versions of himself. So now, in addition to dealing with the sliding Bowser we had to deal with before, we have to deal with uh, Bowser's peeking their heads out slightly for the area. This is where it gets a little bit more tougher. Most of this involves memory, but the easiest way of dealing with it is obviously if a Bowser appears on the left side, you know that uh, that Bowser is going to try and swipe at you. And there's quite a few things that you have to deal with. I moved over here because I believe he's going to come down from either the right or the left in a minute. Nope. That only happened because I lost the power up, and obviously, uh, I, I thought he was gonna go down, but I guess not. One of these guys, I believe, has a backup cat suit. This one. Okay, well, now I know where everything is. <laughs> Again, just like the other auto scores, most of this is just memory, uh, ignoring everything else and basically just climbing up to the top as soon as possible. You see, I thought he was gonna slide down, because that's what he always does. Now, there are multiple places to get a cat suit back, so even though you might lose it rapidly, you'll. Still be able to mostly do stuff. Okay, there we go. We skipped that part. And this is the part that gets a little bit more intense. Because now Bowser's going to start chasing us to the end. So we're basically forced to dash through each of these platforms and hope for the best. And that's it, he's defeated. <laughs> Most of this, fa the fails, by the way, came from me not uh, memorizing it enough, but yeah. That's Cat Bowser, by the way. Meowser's gone now. Yeah, we kind of beat him up. But because Bowser's Fury is a fiend, he's not technically dead. We will see him again. Alright, now time to see the ending of this game. But first, head to this little secret platform area and uh, climb this hidden area and that lets you uh, get a stamp. So yeah, by uh, defeating Bowser we were able to save all the Sprixies again. This time they won't get captured again, hopefully. I'll get the gun flight pole. Cool. Yeah. We're done now.
Luigi has overcome his fears and bested Bowser without his brother's help at all, except for one level where he had to get a stamp. So we get to see the credits, and from here, that'll be the end of the video. So I guess while we're at it, leave a like if you enjoy it, it's a sky, but I'll see you in the next video when we uh, continue on to the secret worlds. Again, the reason why I did not do Bowser's Fury first, because I feel like it's kind of out of chronological order. Obviously, this uh, game happened first, so it makes sense for this one to appear. Also, we get to see Cat Toe and Cat Peach again for a few moments, which is always nice. Cool. But that's obviously not the end of the game. The game is about to get even harder than I already mentioned. And now Bowser's trapped in a bottle, sort of. Not really. We know he's uh, hiding somewhere. That's just part of the credits, really. <laughs> and Boom Boom and Pom Pom just trying to chill out, but not getting it. Oh, and now we see Captain Toad has actually found his friend, so I assume those three Toads that you see over there, those are Captain Toad's helpers that will appear if you play a Captain Toad level with more than one player. Which I think is really interesting. So yeah, our friends managed to escape from this crazy world back into their own land of Peach's Castle. But, uh, there's also a starship in the background, so the game's not over yet. So, best times for completing courses when I'll be displayed. Oh, and we get a cat Bowser on, because why not? And here we'll see that they're trying to build something secretive. That is our key that we have to go to the end of the game later. And now we're done. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed. Comment, rate, subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.